splash back to the 40th Galway International Rally, where over 40 years some Irish rallying greats have made waves on the Galway stages. The late Frank Maher was one to make waves when, in 1989, he famously led Mark Lovell's Work Sierra with his faithful Mark II Escort. And in 1995, the much-missed Tipperary Flyer won the rally on his way to winning the Irish Tarmac Championship. Also sorely missed in Irish rallying, the late Bertie Fisher powered his 555 Subaru to two wins in 1996 and 1999. Whilst another tarmac titan, Kenny McKinstry, left his legacy in Galway with two victories in 1992 and 1994. Among the single victors, Cahill Curley, the dairy car salesman, the very first winner in 1971. Another car dealer, the late Ronnie McCartney from Oma, the 1972 winner in a big triumph. And his wee brother, Desi, who won in 1975. Belfast Adrian Boyd took the spoils in 73, whilst Cork's Jar Buckley, Billy Coleman's cousin, took a dominant win in 81 with the Vauxhall Ireland Chevette. And Dublin motorcycle dealer Brendan Fagan took his only Irish tarmac victory in 1984 with a similar Chevette HSR. Fellow Dubliner of a different generation, Gareth McHale scored the seventh win for the McHale family in 2010. Tim McNulty now adds his name to the illustrious list that has triumphed in this Winter Classic. As now the fans await the classic rally cars in the historic Galway Rally in their final loop of day one. And as we can see, water and the odd patch of shiny tarmac make conditions treacherous. Alan Courtney's main problem, however, is actually seeing where he's going, as the windscreen on the Porsche has missed it up severely. He drops time, ending the day sixth. Also dropping a little time here on the penultimate test is Mervyn Johnson, now fifth and first in the historic class. Now Keane is fourth and leads Class C1 in his post-historic Avenger. James Parr is now third with his Mark I Escort. With the 2006 USA four-wheel drive rally champion Seamus Burke, who originates from Donegal, now second. But clear leaders are Ed Murphy and John McCarthy, with a three-minute, 30-second lead, as English challenger James Sutherland disappeared on this loop. In the Nationals, Frank Moran ends the day 10th, with Peter Hiley 9th, despite that big crash. Patrick Divoli is 8th. And Jonathan Fullen now 7th. Alan Fair has his Honda in 6th. Behind his teammate Neil Pearce in 5th overnight. Eamon Durbin and Keith Gardner splash their way into 4th. Jeffrey Dolan and Connor Murphy are over a minute ahead in third. By the end of the day, Pat Kelly and Dean Rafferty are second with their modified Subaru Impreza, albeit a minute and a half behind the leaders. And those leaders are Tom Flaherty and Patrick Curley. Indeed, at this point, they're the top Galway crew in the main event after Ross Ford's punctures. Indeed, Tom and Patrick have ambitions to win the Brian G. Thornton Memorial Trophy for being the top Galway crew home. There's a small change in the weather for day two, as the rain is less relentless, but Ed Murphy keeps up his relentless pace at the front of the historic section. By the midday service, his lead is over three minutes. Seamus Burke, in second, leads his class in his left-hand drive RS 1800. James Parr, in third, is now a minute and a half behind after this spin on the Green Force Fuels Caterlistrum stage. But the Mark I Escort does a little shopping in the local store. Alan, a slow driver, now Keane still leads his class in the 1600 Avenger in fourth. Alan Courtney has a look at one of the famous dry stone walls with the Porsche as he tackles the opening Kenny Galway Kilcuna stage. The big 
Porsche is bottoming out on the jumps and bumps as it's on standard suspension. Although standard, the big beast houses a 4.2 litre water-cooled V8 engine which produces serious torque. moves up one place to fifth on this loop and is starting to set much more competitive times now visibility has been restored partly thanks to the aid of shampoo smeared on the inside of the screen indeed he'll record one second fastest and one third fastest overall time in the historic section today and as we can see the roads near Hedford are starting to dry slightly but the big 928 is a little unwieldy for some of the narrow Galway roads. Mervyn Johnson in sixth still leads the historic cars built before 1968 as the Fermanagh Ace, who also builds these rally minis, leaps along the Clayton Hotel Kilbeg stage. But back to the national event. And by stage 12, Alan Fair is a fine fifth, albeit over three minutes behind his safety direct teammate, Neil Pearce. <laughs> Eamon Durbin is now third as Pat Kelly retires from second on this loop. But Eamon will also be a retirement on the final stages. Dolan moves up to second and is fastest modified runner on stage 11 but has a drama on the final test when the gear lever breaks. With Pat Kelly gone, Tom Flaherty's lead is now a substantial four minutes. The Galway driver is now intent on preserving his national rally lead and the coveted position of being the top Galway crew. We're lucky, we're just kind of, with all the hard work done yesterday, we're just tipping around today, so we are we're prepared to lose a, about 10 or 15, 20 seconds of stage, we don't care, you know, but it's hard to keep the concentration up doing like that when you're, when you're that way, you know. It's time for the final rundown as the historic crews reach the Oranmore finish. Joe Breslin has had a mini adventure in 11th and third historic class car home. William Todd in 10th is second of the pre-1968 historic class runners. Donal O'Connor and Vincent Fagan bring their escort home ninth. With Aidan O'Connor and Ian Regan eighth. Mike Devine and Kevin Tracy hang the tail in seventh. But for Mervyn Johnson in sixth, it's another fabulous Galway rally tale as he wins the historic class again 21 years after he first won it here in Galway. So I'm delighted now that uh, I was able to do it again today, but we were lucky in a way now, and unfortunately Ray Cunningham didn't finish now, and I don't think I would have beat him now. Now Keane and Sean Hennehan slide to fifth and first in Class C1, as Alan Courtney has a closer look at someone's front garden. Despite this, he moves up to fourth on the final loop, Records that second fastest time on the Kilcuna stage. The big Porsche also takes the D4 class in the classic category. As the historic, this time running at the front of the field, have really entertained the crowds over the 12 stages they contested. James Parr and Declan Kelly are third and first in Class C2 with their Escort RS 2000. Seamus Burke's trip from the USA was worthwhile with second and first in Class D3 with the classic RS 1800. However, the fastest in the historic section and post-historic winners are Ed Murphy and John McCarthy in their Mark I Escort BDA. They finished three minutes ahead of the more modern Mark II escort of Seamus Burke. And the Kerry crew are welcomed onto the Oran Moor finish ramp. Completing the top ten of the National Rally finishers is Kevin McHugo. A 
sideways, Padraig Roach is ninth with his escort, despite putting on a bit of a slideshow in Cahrill Istran village for the fans. Frank Moran and Brian Ford are eighth. With Kieran Murphy seventh and first in class 12. Patrick and Gerard Divoli are sixth and first in class 11. With Alan Fair and Jarlath Keneally, a fine fifth, just 11 seconds behind Jonathan Follin and Ger Myers, who take class 16 in fourth place. In the Honda Challenge, Paul Curley, running in the international field, wins the brake pads in third. An excellent third in the national rally and second Honda, Neil Pearce and Enda O'Leary win a set of Hankook tyres. Whilst David Quigley scooped the 500 euro top prize and two Pirelli tyres. Jeffrey Dolan scooped second place on the national event and also top points in the Irish Tarmac Rally Championship Modified Challenge. Tom Flaherty and Patrick Curley have had a faultless weekend, rounding out the national winners. And they lift the Brian G. Thornton trophy for top Galway crew home. It's been a dominant display in difficult conditions, with a winning margin of nearly four and a half minutes. Yeah, we had a good old run there during the weekend, so we had conditions were bad, but uh, the car was good and notes were good. Let's hope we see more of the modified men at Easter as Ireland takes us to the circuit of Ireland. That'll be next on RPM as round two of the Irish Tarmac Championship leaps into action. Join us then. <laughs> <laughs>